tilt shift lenses have been popular with real estate photographers for many years. A few different reasons, but one of the primary reasons, especially today, is the ability to better compose interiors. So instead of shooting something really wide, like we'd see here with the traditional lens where we're seeing a lot of ceiling, but we're still seeing over the countertops, using a tilt shift lens, we get this type of result where we're able to shift the optics down. We're not seeing as much ceiling. We're still over top of the countertops, but we're now seeing more of also what's below there. But tilt shift lenses have been so cost prohibitive for years, but until recently, there's now a couple uh, new lenses that have come out that have brought that price down to make them now more attractive and worthy of consideration. One of those lenses is the Eliowa 15 millimeter F4.5 shift lens, and that's what I'm gonna be reviewing in this episode. For those who don't know me, my name is Nathan Cool. I'm a full-time real estate photographer in Southern California. Been shooting for many years. I've done a ton of homes, and I've even have uh, best-selling books on real estate photography on Amazon. And I've shot so many homes where sometimes I wished I would have had a tilt shift lens. But as you know from prior videos that I've done, also throughout my books, it's not something that I really lean towards because of it being so cost prohibitive in the past. It just didn't make a lot of sense compared to other things that you could do in post-processing. But some of that is limited. So with the Liowa coming out, that starts bringing that price point down quite a bit. But I was always able to, in the past, do the fake tilt shift. That's where we'd shoot really wide. You step back, you raise the camera height, but then you start cropping down from the top, and then you have something that looks like it was done with a shift lens. But the problem with that is that you need a lot of room to make that work. You have to be able to step far enough back. You're also gonna be losing some pixels. Now, for most real estate photography on modern cameras with even a 24 megapixel sensor, you're still gonna have plenty of pixels left doing the fake tilt shift, but it's still not gonna work ideally for all cases, especially for very small rooms, small kitchens, small bathrooms, small apartments. That's when a tilt shift lens could come in. So with the Liowa now being at somewhat of a more comfortable price point, is it worth it? Well, I got my hands on one. I'm going to put it through the test in this episode. So I'm going to start covering that from top to bottom. But first, a little bit of clarification and also a little bit on the price. So the Liowa is a shift lens. Now a tilt shift lens allows you to tilt the lens up and down, which for most real estate applications isn't really necessary. Shifting is what's more important where we can shift the optics up and down across the sensor and that gives us then a better composition. Either for outside, you've probably seen a lot of videos on this, shooting a large building for architectural photography, but the real nut to crack for when it comes to real estate photography is the interiors. How do we still show counters and sinks? while not getting so much ceiling in the image. So that's where it's most important. So it's a shift lens, but quite honestly, that's really all that I would be using this lens for. Anyways, I don't need the tilt portion of it. It comes in at about $1,200. Now, there is a Rokinon that's a lot less, about $650 but that Rokinon is 24 millimeters, where this Liowa is 15 millimeters. 24 millimeters just isn't enough for uh, small spaces. You need to go a lot wider. So coming in with that, Nikon has one that runs about $3,500. Canon has one that's right around $2,200 or so. So the cost prohibitive nature, especially of that Nikon, $3,500, ridiculous for a lens it might seem, when especially you're used to using something like the Tekina 16-28 to f2.8, which I recommend for most interior real estate photography, which runs about 600 bucks. So the uh, Liowa 15 millimeter shift lens is more, it's $1,200, but it's far less when you're comparing it to some of the other tilt shift lenses that would compete against it that are out there. But the thing is though, is it worthwhile to spend $1,200 on this lens? Is it really gonna be providing you what you need? Are you gonna get the best bang for your buck to be able to do certain applications? I'm gonna cover some of that where it really applies to certain genres, certain uh, problems that you will, would be up against but first I want to dig in, get my hands on this and show you first how the tilt shift works just really quick and then get into some of the specifics comparing this to one of my other recommended lenses, that Tekina 16 to 28 f2.8 lens that I use for interior real estate photography. 
So this is the lens right here and it is built like a tank. I'll review some of that. Just how this is used, it's most importantly right here, this little guide what you see, it's this ring. There's a focus ring, there's an aperture ring, but right here is the shift ring. And what you do with this is you turn it one way and you can see the lens like, lens like here shifts up. That's what you'd be doing like shooting a building, an architectural building, so you shift the optics up. But most importantly, you'd be here, if you're doing interiors, you'd be shifting that down. Now that shifts 11 millimeters down and that might not seem like a lot, but when you're talking about a 35 millimeter sensor, the height on that isn't very much. So you're talking about a big distance in that 11 millimeter shift. In fact, I found and what I'll do throughout the tests here when I go through them, I'm gonna be doing it right about five millimeters. You can see that scale. Once you get it in there, there is a lock knob and it's on the other side of the lens. You just tighten that lock knob and then the lens just stays in place where this should be. If you were looking through the lens while you were shifting this, you would see the camera be moving up, you'd see it moving down, and that's given us that nice composition. So either shifting up or shifting down, depending on how we want to compose the image. So that's the basics of it. I'm going to be rotating it, doing some other stuff here, but just really quickly, a few things about the build quality of this lens. It is built like a tank. Typical of Liowa, uh, you know, on the Zero D lenses that I like for doing video, this lens here, also the shift lens, is also Zero D, so you're talking about no barrel distortion. So that's a great thing. You don't have to worry about then the perspective uh, correction, any of that barrel correction in Lightroom. There are some other things though that I'll get to that you do have to do correcting it. But built like a tank, the lens cap, this thing is metal. And to get this off, you twist it and then you can pull it off. Now, this is one of the downsides, not to just a Liowa lens, but any tilt shift lens is that they're very wide and it has this bulbous front element on it. There is no lens hood. So you have to be very careful that you're not getting scratches on that as you move it around. But also most importantly is it will be subjective to flare. Now, once again, it's not a Liowa thing. This is just a tilt shift thing. So when you're going this wide, 15 millimeters, all wide angle lenses will have a bulbous front element. They sometimes have a little bit of a tulip uh, lens hood on it. This one doesn't. So you have to be careful with that. And then think about, you know, if you are seeing flares to, you know, tilt your camera down a little bit, correct some of that out. Or like I've shown in my books and other videos, sometimes you can put your hand up to block uh, some of that flare that could be coming on. It doesn't make it very good though for doing outside. And I know there's tons of videos that show doing architectural photography with a tilt shift lens outside facing the sun. That's just a flare. Flare monster. Once again, though, my primary use for this and recommendation for any sh tilt shift lens, whether it's Lyra or something else, if you're going to go that route, it's really mostly meant for interiors. Another thing to be aware of, and this is very typical, not just for the Lya, but also just about every tilt shift lens out there. In fact, every tilt shift lens, these are manual focus lenses. Now, not to disparage, it's not that big of a deal uh, if you can use uh, focus peaking, if you're used to using that on your mirrorless camera, but also the ring is very uh, accurate on what it does. So what you'd be doing, as you can see, here's the aperture ring, and it clicks into place very well, but you can also slide it between, so it doesn't really there's little indent stops at f11, there's one at uh, f11, f11 there, f8 there. You can also get it between there too, so it's somewhat of like a cinematic lens. But I was finding that f8 did fairly well. Sometimes I'd probably want to push this to f11 when I get to the images and some of the results of that, I'll show you why. But if you've never used one of these before, here's your focus ring up here. And of course, then you can see what your focus zone is based on if you're at F8, then where that would fall on based on where you were focusing. Most of the time, you're gonna be right here at about infinity or right below infinity for doing most real estate photography. Then you can just pretty much leave it there. And this is a very tight ring. Once again, typical of Liowa, the Venus optics type of stuff. This is built like a tank, metal body, very very solid. One thing to note though is that for some reason this has no weather sealing. Another reason not to take it outside, not just because of flare, but the weather sealing. Up here we can also, by the way, see that lock knob where you would lock that uh, the shift in place.
So now that we have it in a portrait orientation, we're going to do a tall building. It doesn't do us really any good if we were to leave it like this and be shifting just back and forth. Yeah, you could make a pano doing that. But what we want to be able to do is shift up and down. And this lens allows you to do that by merely pressing on this little lever here. And then the lens can be rotated on the body in six degree increments. So we'll press that in, excuse me, 15 degree increments. We'll go six steps with that. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and now our lens is facing up. And now if we start shifting, I'll unlock our knob. Now that we're shifting, we're shifting up or we're shifting back down. We can see there's our scale right on the side. So having this ability to rotate the lens on there is very useful, especially what it's done is it's taken our all of our numbers that we had on our focus zones for our aperture that was on the side, now it's on the top so that as we're looking down, we can see that stuff readily. So that's very nice to be able to shift like that. Now, you're wondering why it might not shift in just 90 degrees? Because you might have some artistic application where you wanna maybe shift it diagonally for some reason. So it allows you that capability. But I thought this was a really nice feature to have and it was pretty easy to use. It took a little while to get used to because this little ring, rotate it back here again, you have to take the entire lens. If you go it, I'll put it back here to zero. A little hard to see with uh, the older DSLR here with a little bit of overhang from where the flash was, but it's on zero. But if I were to try to push this in, all of a sudden, oh, I'm rotating that ring. Oh, I'm rotating this ring. So I got to make sure it's locked. I'm not touching the aperture ring and then I can start rotating it so that it comes up to where I need it. So another thing to notice here, that blue ring that's on this particular lens means it only has five blades inside of it. You're not going to get the best starburst flares. They supposedly have a red ring one with uh, 14 blades, but uh, no one seems to be knowing where that is exactly. So I think that's going to be a future release. They don't even have a price on it. Uh, it's not in stock. So anyways, that's one thing to be aware of, but I didn't find that to be really a big deal when it comes to doing interior real estate photography. I don't care about starburst flares. The maximum aperture is f4.5. Now you might think, well, I'm used to using f2.8 glass, f4.5. Well, it's not an adjustable aperture. It is a fixed aperture lens, which is good. It means it's good quality. And bear in mind, the Nikon and Canon, those tilt shift lenses are f4 and the Rokinon is f3.5. The smallest aperture though on this Liwa is f22. So knowing that, going to f11 should still hold fairly well with really really no discernible type of diffraction issues that you'd have with lenses that only go up to about f16. So you'd still be in a fairly good range. And once again, shooting so wide like this, it's not that big of a deal. And most of the time doing interior real estate photography, you're going to be at f8. And some of the results that I'm going to show, there might be cases where you want to push that to f11, and that can be real tricky. But anyways, let's get into that next. To do the image comparison, what I did, a few different things. Shot this kitchen, this happens to be my kitchen, using the Takina 16-28 f2.8 compared to then the Liowa shifted at five millimeters. So here we're going to get in really close, see some of the results, but the overall result, keeping the tripod at the, the exact same height, you can see this is the result from the Takina lens, and we take a look at the uh, Liowa shifted just five millimeters, we can see there's a lot less ceiling. We see a lot more floor. Now what's happening though is we do have some extension distortion going on, but that's to be expected for shooting so wide at 15 millimeters. So when you're talking about using this in tight spaces, yes, that's just going to be expected. So anyways, these are the two that we're going to be doing. Let's get in really close though. And first, let's take a look at the center focus. So getting in center focus here on Takina and Liowa, we can see zooming in this 100%, looking at those uh, salt and pepper shakers, some of the tile, you can see the sharpness between the two. There really isn't any difference here in using the two lenses. They're about equally sharp. It's acceptable, not super, super tack sharp. As you know from some of my presets and other whatnot, I don't like to over sharpen my images. As something I talked about in a recent video, they just start getting too pixelated 
pixelated. So this is more realistic. Remember looking at when we, this is pixel peeping. This is looking at 100%. What are we really looking at? So overall, center focus was fine. You can see the colors are very similar as well. There's really no difference in color. And when we're talking about chromatic aberration, neither lens really has a problem with it. So really a good quality as far as that's concerned. But now let's take a look and get into some corner focus. Here's where we can start seeing some of the fault of the, uh, the Liowa lens compared to the Takina. Now, all these very wide angle lenses, and most lenses in general, are sharpest in their centers. And of course, the wide angle lenses tend to really suffer when we get to the edges and the corners. We can see though here that the Liowa is suffering more when we take a look at that outlet. Um, it's definitely fuzzy. We take a look at uh, things just below it. They're definitely fuzzier and softer than what they are with the Takina. When you look outside though, and even look at the sink on the fixtures, those things are just equally sharp. So there really is no difference there. It's when we get to the very far edges. So we're going to take a closer look at this with another example. So let's take a look though, getting in close first to just the counters. So this would be typically how uh, shooting with Takina up above the countertops, that's great. We can see the features of this, but when, when we use the five, milli, uh, five millimeter shift on the Liowa, then that drops quite a bit. We see a lot more. Look at how distorted though that trash can is. Not a fault of the Liowa lens. That type of extension distortion is just nature of the beast. If you're gonna shoot this wide, another reason too why you don't wanna shift really doing these interiors, more than about five millimeters, otherwise you're really going to start getting some funky looking unrealistic results. But anyways, you can see between the two pictures here, if we go back and forth, let's take a look at the Takina. That's fine. If you look overall, the sharpness seems fine and also the Liowa seems fine. But now let's get in close and do 100%. Center focus, once again, not a problem. And this is where I was focusing was right on these fixtures around the sink. We can see that everything looks very sharp. The lettering on like the soft soap bottle, that looks fine. Uh, just overall sharpness, you can't really see any difference. Uh, colors a little bit different. They're not off, just a little bit different. Typical of just using a different lens, not bad. But now let's take a look at the corners. When we take a look here, we can really see a huge difference because when we composed this shot, the camera was a lot closer to those counters instead of standing farther back. Using F8, we've got a shallower depth of field. F11 might have helped this, but you can see the big difference here. If we look at the vitamin bottle over there, it says D3 plus K2 gummies. That's softer on the Liowa, but man, that bottle of hand sanitizer is extremely soft on the Liowa lens. In fact, the granite uh, is looks like it's stretching. It's so blurred. It's just not very good quality, but this isn't that out of hand compared to a lot of other really super wide angle lenses. The Takina, I, it is sharp. I do like it, um, but the Liowa, it starts having me question it. F11, once again, would have helped. Would you have shot something like this this close? Well, yes, because using this type of a lens, the tilt shift, that's one of the advantages. Having a small space, you don't want to have so much ceiling. So what you do is you do a shift a few millimeters down and you can then see more of the features, less of the ceiling. Let's take a look though with uh, something straight on so we can see a more controlled instance. So using both lenses, I just shot uh, one of these little bookcases here in the house and just uh, some of the books here. So we can get in close here in just a second and then see some of the lettering and how that worked from side to side. And this is using the Takina. And if we take up the Liowa, it's about the same uh, sharpness. It looks overall, unless you look really close, which we're gonna, to, we're gonna do in just a second here. But uh, this was once again shifted to five millimeters. I didn't do it any other way because eh, there's no sense in doing that. If I'm gonna use this lens, I want it shifted. So let's go in 100% and take a look at the center. When we do side by side, we can see that there is really almost no difference in sharpness. So we can see right in the center where we're talking, where it says 1984, next to that Brave New World, the, the, the Adolf Huxley book, uh, we can see that all looks really good. Let's go over though to that Anglo-Saxon book, the red one, and look at the author name on the bottom, on the Takina. That Mark Norris is very sharp, but it's already soft on the Liowa. And that wasn't that far out. It wasn't really that far to the bottom where we started getting some softness out of that Liowa. Now let's take a look at those edges. 
And here we can see a big difference. So granted, this is only focusing using F8 at about a little over two feet away, which is an advantage of the lie with it. They do talk about that you can focus really close, but there's no sense in focusing really close if you're gonna be this soft with such a shallow depth of field. Here, you'd really have to use F11 to really make it worthwhile. So the Takina, definitely sharp for doing stuff like this. Liowa, just completely unacceptable, really, um, to do any close type of work. But once again, most of what we're doing is, let's take go back out here and take a look at our kitchen comparison. This is typically how we would be shooting something. We'd be shooting something very wide. We wouldn't be very close. So we'd be focusing eight feet, 10 feet away. And once again, take a look at this kitchen shot with the Liowa without zooming in, it does look acceptably sharp. And this is something that's very important is that if you're pixel peeping all the time, then you're gonna be disappointed with just about every piece of gear that you buy, or you're gonna be able to justify spending a lot of money on something else. But overall, yes, it's acceptable sharpness. Is it worthwhile though, compared to the what you'd give up out of the sharpness for the benefit that you've gained be able to do these type of compositions? So in Lightroom, there is just a couple things to note here. There is no lens profile, which isn't really that big of a deal because you really don't have to do any lens correction except for vignetting. So you can see this is the image that I exported after doing the flambient blending and applying some presets and also just tweaking the white balance a little bit typical because in this case I was shooting an auto white balance. So if uh, I were to take a look at the ambient shot, this is the ambient shot. It was rotated just a little bit, but rotating that too, you'd see the verticals aren't a problem. So I'll just rotate that a little bit. You can see those vertical lines look fine. There was no lens correction applied here, but there was one thing applied to it, and that was the vignetting. You can see here, I took that up to a positive 40. If we were to bring that down to zero, you'll see that there's a fair amount of vignetting that goes into there. So this is then without the vignetting, and then this is with it straight out of camera. So some pretty heavy vignetting, even for F8, but that's the nature of the beast with these super wide angle lenses. And even on the Takina, you're gonna see something. It's just that it would be corrected with the profile corrections. So take your vignetting up. You can also see how it starts comparing. I might be able to go up even higher, get something that I might like a, a little bit better just make a preset out of this and then you would be fine. So, but this was just your standard flash ambient blending. This was the flash shot that I took with it. You can see using the flash shot, the colors are fine coming out of this Liowa lens, really no difference. So very sharp, but of course, you know, we've got that corner softness that was going on over here. You don't see that when you're zoomed out at 100%. But once again, this too, you can see had that vignetting taken up to 40, do that, and then you shouldn't have to worry about any other profile corrections when it comes to this lens. So who is this lens for and is it really worthwhile? In a lot of cases, I would say yes. If you're doing HDR, for instance, you're not gonna be worried so much about aperture, use F11, you're gonna be fine. Even if you're using flash F8, F11, you might be able to pull it off, but definitely F8, it was acceptable sharpness uh, across the board. It's just that even things were close to camera at the edges, you can really see a difference if they're exaggerated by a shallow depth of field, and also if you're focusing very close. Now, if you're uh, shooting small condos, I know this is very popular in Europe. I have a colleague in England, in fact, he does nothing but tilt shift because there are such small places there to shoot to be able to show all the features in there in other countries as well. And it's also in those cases completely acceptable to have that wide angle extension type distortion because you, they want to, they know it's gonna be a wide angle shot, but they wanna see all the features in that one shot. So they're not exaggerating the size, they're just trying to get everything in one shot. It's definitely a worthwhile lens to be able to do that. It's also good for architectural shooting where you need to provide some better results than doing a fake tilt shift by tilting up. You do lose pixels using a fake tilt shift, so by being able to use a real shift lens, 
then you'll have more pixels left over to work with, but you have to be very careful outside because of the various lens flare. Doing standard interior real estate photography, if you were gonna go to a shift lens and be able to justify the use of it for higher end clients, the Liowa lens may be okay for that if you can really push it to f11, but the side and corner uh, focus was just for me not acceptable enough to be able to use it on the majority of my shoots for those higher end clients. But if I were to really be stuck in some very tight spaces and I needed to be able to shoot more than uh, what I could get out of the 16 to 28 by composing to show those features, I would definitely give it a strong consideration even for the work I do because for the price, it is actually quite an affordable lens compared to what you're getting out of it. Well, I hope this video is useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.